These waves, a particular form of them, are called internal solitary waves. What's fascinating about them is that you don't see them, except for very exceptional circumstances. What I came to realize is they're not just waves on the ocean surface, but in the interior of the water. And the fact it's so deep and mysterious is the first thing that lured me to them. This stuff is weird and all linear and chaotic, and it's poetic. So my name is Pete Dialysis, and I am a faculty in civil and environmental engineering. My name is Klemos Boliudakis. I'm a third year PhD student. These waves were responsible for sailor rumors. The Loch Ness Monster is a case of an internal wave. You're getting a wave moving. It's pushed from the tide into the mainland, and that produces a little bump on the surface, but it's just the surface signature of an internal wave. These waves trap mass and particulate matter. They are often being chased by large sea mammals, mammals like whales. They can push down layers by as much as a Manhattan skyscraper. Think of it as an internal washing machine, like it's just moving into shallow water like this. It mixes the background temperature structure of the water column, and that sets the background temperature conditions for the ecosystem. What I really like about the internal waves project is that they actually connect the larger scales of the ocean with the smaller scales. You get a very steep depression of a layer. The nonlinear area is balanced by a phenomenon called dispersion. It, different components of the wave want to run off, but at the same time it wants to steepen, and it stays like this very clear and cut dispression, which in our case can be even up to 150 meters. So you, these waves are massive. I think that this is essential in order to understand both the mixing that happens in the water column and at the same time, the oceanic response to the global warming. They also capture water from deep that's colder and it's eventually they slam on the coral reefs. So they control the health of the coral reefs. They control temperature structure. So, you know, if there's a variation of two to three degrees, it can make a huge difference. In lakes, they affect the drinking water quality as well. It basically involves what's called numerical mathematics to solve the equations, and there's a lot of high-performance computing which gets involved, where critical participation is that of a computational scientist, Greg Thompson, who makes all this stuff possible. And we work very closely with a field oceanographer who goes and measures these things, and an applied mathematician who studies what's called nonlinear wave theory. They can give us a lot of insight into physics. People are surprised to find out that they even exist, and then the implications these things have for underwater navigation, sea bottom mounted facilities, offshore platforms, to more, you know, basic science applications. I think people are actually stunned to hear about that. What we're doing is really cutting edge in terms of both unveiling physics through very carefully designed and implemented numerical simulations, but a collaboration with people across different areas. So I, I think we're really pushing the boundaries there. I, I want beauty and poetry and science, and I think those waves offer that.